Hi there, I'm Alex from the Southern Ukulele Store, and today we're going to take another look at Kanalea. Uh, Kanalea ukuleles, made in Honolulu, they are one of the premier Hawaiian made ukulele brands. You'll notice we feature them a little bit more heavily on this Southern Ukulele Store YouTube channel than uh, their peers, Koaloa and Kamaka. And it's purely because Kanalea are constantly turning over really high-end, bespoke-feeling, noteworthy instruments. Um, they're not building in batches like the other brands are, where we're waiting a long time and then a few HF3s or a few KSM00s turn up at once. Uh, Kanalea, it's a much more kind of, this is what you've ordered, it's being put through production. So you'll notice we feature them a bit more heavily and they totally deserve every bit of attention we're gonna give them. Uh, saying that today, we're gonna to split the video into two halves. Uh, if you're not familiar with uh, the kind of bottom part of YouTube, in the scrolling part there, you can split and just skip to bits of the video. So if you're more interested in the koa side of things, and we've got some really gorgeous, uh, flamey, compressed koa to show you today, um, then you can skip ahead, but I want to take one last look uh, at the Kanalea Monaco series. So the Mango ukuleles is the first half of the video today. And just like that, I'm holding a Kanalea Monaco ukulele. You'll notice on my right is a concert and on my left is a super tenor. But we're going to talk first about the tenor. What is a Kanalea Monaco? I'm going to tell you, I designed the Kanalea Monaco. This is my, this is the product of my brain with much more interesting and superior craftsmen putting my idea into action. Now, I'm not the first person to ever come up with the idea of making a mango uke. There are several manufacturers that build mango ukuleles and they're fantastic, they're very good. At the real high end of things, mango is scarcely used and the really sexy, really noteworthy, well, just like map-like pieces of mango just are not being used on ukuleles. They're just not found. And we have had issues with the Monaco series where Canalea have just simply not been able to find the right sets of wood for baritone before. With a tenor, it's, you know, it's just about possible to get pieces of wood you know, once or twice a year in small batches. But we have decided to discontinue the model because the availability of mango is becoming more scarce and the popularity of the wood is growing. So there's this, uh, it's just become not possible at this time to continue the line. So this last batch, you can see, I just keep showing you the mango and I'm looking at the reflection of it in the camera instead of concentrating on talking. And that's how I feel about the majority of these. Um, we pick the wood with the Sousas. So, you know, they quite often send us pictures of wood sets and we give, give it the yay or nay. Other features include mango side mounted dots that go up this side of the fingerboard. So when you look down, you can see with mango uh, side dots there as well. There is a Monaco script inlay on the 12th fret. That's inspired by the harmony uh, guitars of the kind of 1950s. That it's like a Hawaiian guitar thing where you would see side scrolling script inlays and they're just not featured in ukuleles at the high end very often. So it's something that we really wanted to see Canalea do. If you're wondering about the font, that's uh, originally a handwritten Monaco um, script from Carmana Souza that has been epoxied and recreated. It has the true R bracing. Let's get it in the angle. So if you just look at this, this point in the camera here, you'll see that it has Canalea's scaffold-like true R bracing, which creates choice points of contact along the top, giving the top more of a chance to resonate. You have the traditional style thin line headstock with a flat point on the tenors, with the Goto Stealth tuners and a slim line design to the headstock. So a really nice backward angle, giving it a bit more tension, a bit, it's a bit tauter, it's a bit harder. So when you play, you can get a bit more of a dynamic um, range of sounds from the instrument. And then you have the mango inlay in the headstock as well, which won't focus, I'm really sorry. Let's get my pink hat out of the shot, it might help. Just gorgeous. It's a high gloss UV cured finish, so a really glass-like um, hard wearing finish, but with a satin neck to give it a lived in feel. And finally, you have an ebony fingerboard and bridge with a pin bridge. And the bridge pins are made of ebony as well. 
I'm going to show you the concert and the super tenor next, and then we're going to give them all sound samples at the same time, just for, for your reference. So next up, we have the concert. Once again, it has a texture. It's telling a story before you even play a note on it. It's a gorgeous piece of wood with some lovely figuring on the front, back, and sides. This will be the last Monaco concert, remember? We've only ever really made, I think, four of them in the two year period that the Monaco has been in production. It has all the feet same features as the tenor, except you'll notice that the epoxy is done in orange on this concert. We've tried to mix up the colors to give them a bit more of an individual vibe. So some of them have been red, orange, yellow, colors that tie in with the colors of a mango. Uh, you have the ebony fingerboard and bridge with those side mounted um, fret dots. And then you have the Cobra headstock. So you have the slightly more pointy stylized headstock for the concert rather than the big statement <laughs> flat point one that would look a bit funny on a concert. Uh, it still has a nice backward angle with a lot of torque and it's still of the concerts out there at the high end. One of the most dynamic and very warm but also projecting concerts as I'll hopefully show you in a moment. Yeah, a lovely ukulele. So that's the Monaco C. And then finally, we have a one of a kind. This is something that we've requested from the beginning with the Monaco series, but it's taken until the last batch for Canelaire to find a suitable piece of wood wide enough to accommodate the super tenor body. I mean, just look at that. This is, I think, for me, visually, my personal favorite Monaco we've had. I'd actually, um, even though my, my own Monaco has my name on it, I would consider swapping it for this beauty. It's, uh, it's a stunner. So the Super Tenor has a wider lower bow, as you can see. The difference between them, it's a hybrid between a tenor and a baritone. And although the body length is the same, that wider lower bow creates more natural bass. And where I find you notice that most with a Canalea is on the C string. So if you have a low G, it, it, it continues to resonate and sound as a low G does, but you get an added oomph, a bit of a bump on the two middle strings, especially the C, those lower frequencies, they really come out higher in the mix than the treble. So this is strung high G. I mean, I think normally a super tenor would, you know, it would suit a low G as well as any other ukulele that's ever been made. You have the same spec as a tenor, including the epoxy yellow, is it yellow? Yeah, epoxy yellow Monaco script inlay with the side dots. Gloss finish, ebony fingerboard and bridge with the ebony bridge pins. And then the traditional flat point headstock that's slimline and lightweight. This is such a lightweight instrument. I've played sopranos that weigh a noticeable amount more than this. All three of these ukuleles are feather light and I don't really know what to say. I don't want to over egg the cake. I know you're watching a YouTube video. You're expecting to be entertained. All I can say is that I am so proud to have been associated with this series. I'm almost emotional to feature them for the last time. You know, there is a chance, I suppose, in the future that we can do another batch of these. But for now, it's just not it just doesn't make sense without there being a huge price increase, because ultimately these are custom shop instruments. These instruments are made in a batch, but they are not factory, you know, just let's just make a Monaco. You know, there's so much planning that goes into getting the right wood sets and putting them into production and the designs like the inlay. Although they are, I think, largely laser etched, you know, these things take time and they take skill and precision. And that is why I'm going to play the Monarca concert tenor and super tenor for you now, one last time, and uh, hopefully strike a bargain with somebody to swap my Monarca for this one in the future.
Well, it's going to take some time to get over the mango, but luckily we're going to look at some really high-end, gorgeous Koa ukuleles now. Um, before we move on, some of you will undoubtedly ask in the comments section, you know, what's going to replace the Monaco and the Sus series? Both popular ukuleles that have been discontinued recently between us and Canalea. Well, there's actually nothing set in stone in the pipeline. And I'd love to know what kind of ukulele you guys dream of. Please let us know in the comments section. Um, if you're wanting to, wondering what I'm dreaming of right now, well, I, this logo here that you might have seen in a few videos, this is the Manuhu, the Hawaiian hummingbird. It's a ukulele, a kind of, not a one-off, but maybe a two or three custom shop instrument production that I'm working on with Canal Air right now. So, so please do look out for that later in the year and uh, leave a comment letting me know what you would dream up in the old, uh, in the old computer there if, uh, if you had the chance. Moving on to Koa now, let's take a look at a rare Canal Air K3 Soprano Premium. This is just the best. Um, this is the second K3 we've had in the last 12 months and I'm seeing a theme. The more bling and spec you can put on the Soprano, the more visually impressive it is because where the Soprano is so small, these really sexy pieces of wood, you know, this like this low in the tree compressed color with the holographic effect, it just looks even better. The K3 spec has a large maple rosette with uh, a purplish tortoiseshell binding on the front and back. You have white mother of pearl dots on the fingerboard and then you top it off with a white mother of pearl inlay on the headstock with an ebony face plate, ebony fingerboard and pin bridge with ebony bridge pins. There's some really lovely bits on this ukulele, uh, specifically on the side and the bottom I want to show you. Look at that. Get lost in that piece of wood. It's just gorgeous, isn't it? And then we turn around and you have just here on the butt even more of this three-dimensional grain on both sides with some sap wood there as well. A UV gloss finish, so a cured, very hard glass-like finish with a satin neck. A 38mm nut width, which is rare on a Soprano anyway, but you know, commonplace on a Canalea. Uh, Canalea Sopranos are few and far between. They are not making all models in a Soprano form now as far as I'm aware, so this is a rare opportunity to get a K3 Soprano. It's something that's been on our waiting list with Canalea for quite a long time. I think they had to wait for the right piece of wood to come along, and they did, and it looks great. So let's give the uh, K3S Premium a play and see what you think. Next up today, we're going to look at something that seems a bit understated after all these gorgeous high-spec custom ukes and the K3. But I just had to show you the wood on this because I don't know if I've seen a piece of koa like this before. The top half is very, very dark, almost kind of volcanic. And then the bottom half has this really cool story to tell in the wood grain. Especially as you look at it from a kind of lower angle, you just see more and more different eccentricities in the wood. And then you look at the bottom and the side. And it's just stunning. 
the back as well a really lovely horizontal grain ukulele some wonderful book matching there as well um, this is a k1 concert and uh 38 mil nut width ebony fingerboard and bridge with standard canalair spec so a mother of pearl inlay ebony head plate there with an ebony fingerboard and bridge with mother of pearl dots and although this doesn't have a lot of the cosmetic aesthetic specs it does have a natural cosmetic and aesthetic quality from the wood used to make it what else can i say there were two Canelaire concerts I could show you and I really struggled to pick which one looked more special in the video. I didn't want to repeat myself. So let's just trust that both of them are great. I'm going to give this one a play for you now and see what you think. Earlier on, we took a look at that K3 Soprano. Let's take a look at a tenor now, much more kind of naturally what we expect from Canelaire. This is the K3 Tenor Premium. It has that maple rosette with premium koa top, back and sides. This is a really light piece of maple that actually could almost be fooling you from a distance into thinking that it was um, White Mother of Pearl. Very different to the other one we featured today with more conventional koa, but really wavy, dramatic in fact that's what can oh look at that i'm just going to stop and look at that for a second so that's actually what canalea call it when they're looking for um different pieces of wood and grading them they look for what they call drama they look for something that has that story to tell those textures um and then when you mix it with the you know the front and back tortoiseshell binding that rosette and just the Canalea woof factor, you know, where you go, oh, <laughs> you've got a winning combination. You have satin neck, UV gloss finish with um, open gear tuners. Really good, reliable tuner. Uh, nothing to report about that that you, you kind of might want to change. You have a 38 mil nut width with a really nice wide string spacing. So Canalea feels girthy, it feels big in your hands, but the shape of the neck is still naturally quite slim. So you don't have a massive depth to play with, but you do have the width, which is what most fingerstyle players seem to be looking for. I recently called a 38 mil nut width a trend, a trendy thing. Like it's not something that, you know, people are leaning towards more and more now. But certainly for me, the 38 mil nut width is the first thing that attracts people to Canalea. And it's the thing that attracted me to purchasing a Canalea in the first place myself. Let's give the K3 Tenor Premium a play and see what you think.
We featured lots and lots of very unique Koa kind of layers on this channel over the years. Um, most recently one that was a K1 Master Grey that had been made in error. And we said to kind of layer, if anything like that ever comes along again, please, please, please just put us down for it. We don't want to miss out. And that's how we ended up with this ukulele. This is a premium grade Canalea K1 with, I guess, it's almost like a grid. I kind of want to play noughts and crosses on this. Look at the wave in the koa, that gorgeous piece of uh, heartwood in the middle, going all the way down. And this is a K1, so there's no cosmetic thrills to talk about. But all the way around, this ukulele has some magical pieces of wood putting it together. It sounds amazing too. I can't wait to give it a play for you again in a minute. And the back as well, a really lovely, more subtle, more subdued back. But that's by any other standards, this would be a crazy extrovert, quirky looking back. Um, other details are the same as a K1 spec, so like the console we looked at earlier, mother of pearl trim and dots, 38mm nut width. It's a UV gloss finish with a satin neck. And yeah, it's another one of those ukuleles that's got that poor factor when you look at it for the first time. I can't imagine this ukulele will last very long. Let's give this Cadillac K1T premium a play and see what you think. did my best upside down all right we're going to close out today's video with a ukulele that i've long admired something that has that 1940s 1950s hawaiian lap steel guitar chic to it just a tiny bit of reference to hawaii with the hawaiian islands on the front inlaid in abalone this is the Kanalea islt premium yeah Let's just take a closer look because we're not talking about this koa, but look at the koa on this. I picked this ukulele last because I needed a ukulele to go after that K1T premium that wouldn't look boring. <laughs> because certain ukuleles in this video today have looked absolutely one of a kind. And this one is a tiny bit more subdued, but it still has plenty of drama, as Canalea call it. I love that term. I'm going to use it more often now. And you have all these kind of, I want to call them wrinkles, but I know that's not the correct term. So all these bits of compression in the koa where over time the weight of the tree has pushed it down and you've, you've got this natural lamination in the kind of holographic effects. I guess that's what I want to call it. Um, you have front tortoise shell binding on this model as well with abalone dots. I wish they came out better in the uh, in the light on the camera. They don't. I'm going to have to do a different close up for you. And then finally, and really lovely touch. You have the abalone inlay on the headstock, and this model has gold open back tuners. If you want something just a tiny bit more fancy than a K1 or a K2, you want something that's not symmetrical. This is a fantastic choice, and a great ukulele to end today's video. So I'm going to give the ISLT Premium a play and see what you think.
What I will say before I sign off is that Canalea recently switched from Aquila to, I think it's worth uh, clear fluorocarbon. Either way, it's the best decision they've ever made. Each of these instruments just resonates noticeably more than previously. So that just about wraps it up. We've taken a look at uh, a real handful, you know, eight, yeah, eight really gorgeous Canalea ukuleles today. Um, but I am kind of bummed out to see the end of the Monaco series. I really hope, although I believe probably it will be, I really hope that it's not forever, but I think, yeah, I think looking at the, the, the rising cost of the timbers and the manufacturing, it's, ex it, you know, so expensive to produce an instrument in Hawaii. I do think that they're, there is a point now where if we were to produce more of these and really bid on the right kind of mango, you know, they would go up uh, an exorbitant amount in price. And uh, yeah, I don't really want to see that happen. I think we've made about 18 or 20 with Canalea and each one has felt really special. I, <laughs> I kind of want to be going with, you know, this is perfect. And I feel like we've achieved that with all of the Monarchos, whether it's the handful of concerts, handful of baritones, or kind of more readily the 12 or so tenors that we've made. Um, I would really love to know what you guys would produce if you could produce any kind of wacky instrument. Let's think big. Let's think like when Homer Simpson was allowed to produce a car with his brother. Do you remember that episode? Yeah. Let's, let's think big like that because that's what I do. And... Um, you know, I've been really fortunate to do customs with Canalea, Big Island with the Uli, Flight with the Carabo, and you know, a handful more over the years. And um, I'm always looking for new ideas. So, hey, let loose in the comments section. If you have any questions, you can contact me on 01202430820 or email me at alex at ukulele.co.uk. For now, though, what a great video. I really hope that you've enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed filming it. Have a great day, and I'll see you very soon.